So the sprinkle, sprinkle, drizzle, drizzle. <laughs> and somebody is just going to be like, listen, baby, just get on, get on the jet. Go do your work there in South Africa and then the jet will be there to just pick you back up and come see me when you're done. Finish! Please marry me off with somebody who's at least good looking. If I'm still going to learn them, please mother, at least let my eyes be like... He displays emotional intelligence, but he lacks empathy. Or maybe my untrained eye is not used to seeing a good and healthy relationship. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to part two of my take on controversial trending topics or what has been trending in pop culture, urban culture, in social media. Let us talk about it. This is part two. I hope you have watched part one. If you haven't, maybe start there so that you can come over to this one. Don't forget to watch all the ads. Become a member if you feel ever so inclined to become a member on the membership space. And thank you for being here. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Like the video after you have watched it. And if you agree that you like the video, then please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into part two of my take on controversial trending topics. <sighs> I'm going to start with the one thing that I really just don't like to talk about, but it's okay, I will talk about it. Um, one of the reasons why I don't like to talk about the whole Michali and Leroy thing is because I know Michali personally, so I don't like to talk about it. She's friends with my sister, but I've met her a number of times and I've engaged with her in conversation and I just don't like it. I feel like I'm not too close to the situation, but at the same time, this time around, I did want to talk about it because of what has been happening. So let's get into it. The Michali and Leroy saga. So if you are not familiar with what happens in pop culture, social media culture, South Africa, Michali is a huge, huge, in her own right, social media influencer, digital creator, celebrity, whatever you want to call her in her own right in this country. A beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous girl and who's doing the absolute most, okay? transforming the influencer culture, the influencer culture in South Africa. So anyway, Michali has been seeing a man by the name of Leroy, and we know what the story is there, but I'm going to touch on what's happened recently. You might be able to see this maybe two or three weeks after it's happened, but as I'm recording this, it happened last week. So bear with me okay i'm a pre-recorder for the sake of the fact that i have three jobs so please bear with me so anyway um michali releases some instagram stories of her face being bruised up and i'll i'll put up some pictures her face being bruised up she's got a mark here she's got a little bit of a black eye underneath here she's got a mark on her lip and she tags she says in the little caption she says thank you my angel and she tags Leroy. So of course, this caused an uproar in the country, okay? Some people were happy, some people were sad, some people were like, well, some people whatever. First and foremost, immediately when I saw that, my initial reaction was, why did you post it? That was my initial reaction, okay? Because there are so many people who love to hate on her. And then I thought about it for another five minutes. And then I thought, you know, actually, no. When it comes to gender-based violence, a woman should be able to tell her side of the story. Whether it is a Michali, whether it's a Katleo, whether it's a Spogazi, whether it's a woman, she should be able to tell her side of the story or speak her truth irrespective on whatever platform, blah, blah, blah. But she knows, even with her big following and her numbers she knows that even if she were to delete that post within four minutes or two minutes or whatever it was somebody is snapped it up has already snapped it up so of course it went on to twitter and on to tiktok and people had a field day at the expense of michali's sadness i hated that i couldn't i can't be i'm not gonna sit here and say uh 
so I agree with some of Michali's choices. I'm not going to sit here and say I agree with some of Michali's choices. I don't. I don't. And I think I've mentioned that in previous con controversial trending topics. However, however, I do have a problem with people who are going to barrage and desecrate somebody who is going through a moment of gender-based violence. Now, because she is with a very toxic human being, I've never made, I've never minced my words about how I feel about Leroy. I've never minced my words. I've actually spoken about it in a controversial trending topics. And I was like, why this guy? I don't like this guy. And for some reason, I don't like him. I don't know him personally, but I don't like him. And I'm, that's not going to change today. Okay. And he then decides, because he's a narcissist, full on, full blown. He then decides to release a statement saying that, oh, this and this, basically saying that she called him 75 times. She came to the house. She had a knife. She threatened him with a knife and this, that and the other. And then in defense of himself, he pushed her. She landed into the wall and that's how her face happened. Okay. Okay. And then she then continues to say, uh, he then continues to allude to the fact that she may be using certain substances because he says, which I cannot name. This man is doing everything in his power to destroy this woman. All because she put up those two pictures. He said, really, bet, let's go. But in his response, he was literally completely desecrating Michali and her, rep her reputation. One thing about me, when I'm talking seriously about something, I slow down. When I'm talking about fun things and whatever, I talk very fast. And I'm joking around, I talk very fast. But when I'm talking about something serious, I typically slow down. This is serious, so I'm going to slow down. So I might be talking about it for a while. Don't blame me. It is what it is. That's how I'm wired, okay? But that's when I realized that Michali is dealing with an absolutely toxic human being absolutely narcissistic of note and i just thought to myself man i wish she didn't post that i wish she would have done all her things behind the scenes go legal if you have to like all those things do all those things i wish she hadn't posted it publicly but like i said earlier on i also understand that women shouldn't be silenced especially when it comes to these kinds of things. So then he wanted, he came out with a letter to try and desecrate her and her reputation, which I don't think he will. I genuinely don't think she, he will. I think he, she will come back from this, even though this is a big stain on her career and her, you know, uh, the, the trajectory of her career. This person wants to pull her down with him because... I think he just did it because he's vindictive and he wanted to ruin her reputation. That's why he did it. <sighs> Here's the thing. Gender-based violence is never going to be acceptable, not in this house. It will never be okay, not in this house, not with me. So I think she should take whatever steps that she feels comfortable taking against Leroy. Sure, go for it, do it. Um, but I do also like the fact that in the two minute video that she took out, there wasn't much that was said, but I also do understand that she is a public figure. She's a huge name public figure and maybe she's doing things under G that she doesn't want to really talk about or can't talk about as yet, which is fine, which is fine. But when she released that, what I did appreciate is how she took accountability for her behavior in this as well. One of the big things that is surefire uh, evidence and indication that somebody realizes the fuckery that's going on is taking accountability and, and seeing the role that you played in all of this. You know, I do also, however, feel no form of violence, whether against men or against women, is acceptable this is gender-based violence period 
whether it was done to the man or the woman, period. It's gender-based violence because it was done by a member of the opposite gender. You hear my chat? That is gender-based violence, okay? But the thing is, I liked what Unati said in Mac G's podcast where I saw the clip on TikTok where she was like, you know what, <clears throat> with a man or woman, if you're going to start something, finish it. If you're going to start something with me, I'll finish it. Irrespective of the fact that it's man, woman, I do not encourage or condone violence. But if a man is going to come at me violently and expect me to just sit like this, it's not going to happen. For me, what hurts me the most is that the pain that she's going through, because you can say whatever you want about how she was pompous about this and this and that and the other and this happened and that, but she loved him. If there's one thing that she's made very evidently clear, is that she loved him. And when you love people, you make stupid mistakes. You make stupid decisions sometimes. I need her to understand who the fuck she is. Sorry for the language. I need her to understand who the F she is. I feel like she needs to see this. She has young people in a chokehold, man. Whatever she puts up, we love it. Whatever she does, we love it. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous girl who can go so far. Genuinely, I feel like she needs herself a man somewhere there in France. You know, like in Cannes. Like a man who's got bonkers worth of money. To be able to handle a girl like that who likes that kind of lifestyle. She needs somebody who's not in the eye. Who doesn't want to be in the eye. Somebody who's just going to be like, listen, baby, just get on, get on the jet. Go do your work there in South Africa and then the jet will be there to just pick you back up and come see me when you're done. Finish! That's the kind of man that she needs. <laughs> Unknown, but a billionaire. Uh, Married at first sight, South Africa. Now somebody came into my Twitter DMs and said, you tweet about married at first sight, South Africa a lot. Please talk about it in your controversial trending topics video. I love it. <laughs> Yay! I would like to say I think I love it more than I did the ultimatum. I really did enjoy the ultimatum. Oh, Kanye. I did enjoy the ultimatum. However, I love Married at First Sight South Africa. Look, I think the experiment itself is, is great. But in a South African context, there's just so many things. But in terms of and this and black people, you know, things like this is not going to fly with black people, but I love the fact that they put it up on the screens for us to see. Their choice in the couples, it's, it's a bunch of beautiful people, which I love to see. I love to see because if you're gonna pair somebody up with somebody and marry them off and, and hope it be a forever thing, please marry me off with somebody who's at least good looking. If I'm still going to learn them, please, Mara, at least let my eyes be like, yes. I need to have stars in my eyes when I look at that person, right? So, bunch of really good looking people. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Kuto. Sebenzile. Woo! Kumo. Buitepo. Awa wena. Awa, 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 awa. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people on the show. Initially, thoughts, uh, Z, Toby, Le, Z was paired up with Tami. Initially, I thought, uh, I don't think this is a great match. Immediately after they got married, I was like, I don't think this is a great match. Z, Toby, Le seems like a very sensitive person who needs to kind of be held with soft hands and all of that. And I don't think Tami can give that to her. Tami is your standard Zulu man who comes from a polygamous family who might be interested in polygamy in the long run and I don't think Zitobile would be interested in that and I was just like I don't know but then when we started seeing them start to talk things through um Tammy does a lot of gaslighting I noticed that but I also appreciated the fact that he does not mind he he, he gets hurt seeing her hurt right and that could be a form of just doing it to, to seem like the good guy in front of the cameras. But I, I genuinely do think that he doesn't like hurting her. But in the same breath, as the show has evolved, it's nine episodes in at this stage, 
I don't see them together. I, I don't see them together. Post the show. I don't see them together. Tami and, uh, not Tami, Tabang and Kumo. Kumo needs to pipe down. Pipe down. Pipe down a bit. Because the reality is when you're going to go onto a reality show, people are going to have things to say. People are going to have opinions. People are going to have... Now she's busy fighting with people on TikTok, fighting with people, blocking people, all because people are voicing their opinion with regards to her. So she's fighting people on TikTok. And I'm just like, girl, no. No, 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 no. You chose to be on the show. You chose to be on the show. So we're going to talk about you. <laughs> Tabang, I feel like it's just there for vibes. <laughs> Tabang is just there to drink his Don Julio and call it a day. Have his hub and call it a day. <laughs> um, I don't see the relationship lasting. I feel like they're far too young. They're young, man, and their lives are all about munati, groove, good times, whatever. I don't think both of them are mentally ready for what a marriage entails i don't think so i genuinely don't think so so i was just like mm, i don't see it i think that kumo has a bit of a mouth on her she tends to be disrespectful especially after uh, episode nine and how she's also engaged tabang himself i like how opinionated she is i like the fact that yeah my job it's not to cook for you this here emotional labor that you're displaying here on me, not going to fly. And I liked that about her. I like that about her. Kuto, I had faith. Kuto, I had faith, guys. I thought to myself, or no, Kuto seems very emotionally intelligent. And then he kept on making comments about how Dee's body type is not for him and blah blah and I'm like okay enough enough okay we get that you're saying that she's beautiful you're saying all of this just try man get over the fact that sometimes you're not going to get everything you want in the package that you want when it comes to a partner that's just basic facts, okay? Get over it. Try and actually give yourself to the relationship and try. And he did try. And there's some things that I was like, nice, nice, Kuto, nice. But after episode nine, absolutely not. I'm just like, nope. He displays emotional intelligence, but he lacks empathy. How he outed his wife in front of the other couples. showing her insecurities, showing all of this, and then answering the threesome question with Buitepo. No! That's when I realized, absolutely not. Cut it. No, no. D is not perfect herself. I think D unale hubu gaslighter. I think D unale liena. What's this thing with the father of your baby, of your child? What is this? What, why, why must you talk to him about wanting him to meet Kuto? Kuto is your husband. He's the father of your child. Finish. Doesn't need to meet or to be okay with. Ah, hey, 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 hey. Even Kuto said that I barely engage the mother of my child. I don't see the need. And honestly, I don't see the need either. So there's moments where I feel like D gaslights Kuto a little bit as well. I don't see it as well. Sevenzile and Buitepo, they look damn near perfect, don't they? But I feel Conan to off. I don't know. I can't place. I can't place it, and I don't know why. I keep saying, "Hurry!" I feel Conan to off. Something is about to come, or maybe my untrained eye is not used to seeing a good and healthy relationship. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know.
I don't know. But basically, I'm loving it. If you're not watching Married at First Sight South Africa, I highly, highly recommend that you do. It's great. It's freaking fantastic. It's, I love it. I love it. Drizzle, uh, drizzle, men. Somebody said, Kato, I really would love for you to speak about drizzle, drizzle, men. Now, if you're on TikTok, you would know what this is about. Um, there's the whole phenomenon of sprinkle, sprinkle women. I don't follow that lady. I, there's certain things I agree with. There's certain things that I don't agree with in terms of the message that she's putting out and projecting to women and what to look out for and whatever. But when it comes to her saying the things about confidence and if somebody cheats on you, leave and all of this, there's some things that I agree with. But the other things, uh -uh, I don't. So sorry sorry i don't agree with so i'm not gonna say much about sprinkle sprinkle lady drizzle drizzle man i don't drizzle drizzle is not asking for a lot drizzle drizzle is about respect it's about giving me something that you can't give anybody else see when you spend money on someone that money is gone that means that money was for that person alone for thousands of years guys have been dying on the line for a woman who only gives back what they've given to 50 other men and they'll give to 50 other men since. Drizzle Drizzle is about giving somebody something truly special. It's about sending the Uber Black instead of the Uber X. It's about buying me a new Kanali white shirt so I look good when we go out because I gotta look good too. It's about giving me that compliment, letting me know that no other guy on this planet can wear a Kanali shirt like I can wear. I just got off the phone with someone I was seeing and she asked me how my day was going and I explained I was at the airport and then she said I'm glad you got there safe and I said yeah I had to take an uber I had to block her I mean she was great and everything she was emotionally intelligent always paid for dinner pretty much catered to my every need but if you hear I'm taking an uber to the airport and your first move is not to open up Venmo and send me money are you even a real woman and then you find out I'm on a commercial flight and you don't immediately charter me a private jet I know my worth drizzle drizzle I'm in my soft guy era. I want to be pampered. And if you're broke, just say that. And I'm sure later she'll come around looking for some sugar, but this sugar don't mix without drizzle. Oh no, when this came out, I was just like, okay, this must be satire. I feel like the men are just making a whole big joke out of this whole thing. And if that's the case, that's great. Then they should make a whole big joke out of this whole thing. Be because it's hilarious. Um, men being in their soft guy era, Okay, sure, sure, each to their own. Um, I don't disagree with the fact that men should also want nice things for themselves from their partners, from their women and all of that. Men should also want to be treated nicely and bought nice things and all of that. I mean, when I'm in a relationship, I do nice things for my partner. It's just standard, provided he... Yeah, if, yeah, if. Provided it's reciprocated, I feel like it's just standard to do nice things for your partner. However, um, I, just, I just saw it as a satirical moment. I think it's satire. I think the men are making a big joke of it and all of that. That's great. If they are serious... <laughs> Good luck with that. Let's let's see how far they'll get with that. But it, hey, men should also have the opportunity and right to want nice things from their partners as well. If you, a woman, are going to sit here and say you want him to do this for you, you want him to do that for you, you want him to do that for you, you should be able to, to reciprocate that behavior. So the sprinkle, sprinkle, drizzle, drizzle, <laughs> drizzle, drizzle. <coughs> The sprinkle, sprinkle, drizzle, drizzle moment is just weird for me. I'm just like, okay, uh, go off. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily make me lose sleep at night. I just find it quite hilarious. I find it quite funny. Promise Makunyani and Lundi, the life coach. Now, this landed up in my inbox a couple of days ago when I record this. And I know of Promise Makunyani through Owami's the whole big shindig with Owami, right? And so what's been happening with Promise and uh, Lundi is madness. It's absolutely madness. Okay, Lundi released her TikTok where she spoke about Promise and Promise's whole 
shindig about what she talks about online i don't follow her but basically she talks to married women and if she sees this she's probably going to say why do i even have an opinion i'm not even married okay cool uh but she talks to married women and how she's said before i think the big contentious thing that she said before is that she would never she wouldn't leave uh her husband for cheating something along those lines allegedly so uh something may have happened between her and lundi the life coach and lundi did a TikTok, and i'll put them here so that you'll see what i'm talking about so apparently this is promises page so promise is the lady who said that she doesn't mind her husband cheating on her and she's angry in my post she's asking why did i say that she doesn't mind her husband cheating because when you come here and make videos and be angry at other women hold everyone accountable except your husband and say that women are disrespecting you she disrespected you and then she had a baby with your husband as if he didn't participate and then you go around and say there is no need for women to send you evidence that your man is unfaithful because you're not bothered by that. That is you saying you don't mind. Guys, update. I'm back and yes, we are definitely going ahead. We are definitely saving her. Those are definite, right? And um, another update or counsel that I got is that I should not make a legal matter a social media matter. Lundi did a TikTok, and then after that, it truly just became a back and forth between the two of them. Promise was already talking about how she's going to go sue and she wants to talk to her legal team and this and this and blah, blah, blah. And, um, I am a life coach myself. I agree with a lot of what Lundi was saying, especially about trauma and having gone through certain things and how it says a lot about your self-esteem and your self-confidence. I agree with her. I stand by her. I agree with her. A lot of the time when we react a certain way, it says a lot about our confidence, about what we fear and what we lack. And there's many things that I'm just like, mm. baby girl, promise I don't agree with your message, babes. So she's probably, if she sees this, she's going to be like, yeah, well, you're not married. What do you even know? Okay, it's a ring. Doesn't make it any different. It really doesn't make it any different from any long-term relationship. And there's certain things that I won't tolerate that she will tolerate or that she will not leave her man, her man, her man for. And that's fine. Is it intense? Yeah. Is it really just ridiculous also at the same time? Yeah. I don't see it. I see a lot of bullying between the two women, which wasn't nice to witness. I think some of the things that Lundi said as well are not nice. And I, the, the, the repetition of video after video, um, uh, towards promise uh, and insinuating and saying certain things, just not nice. And then promise also the rhetoric, the, the coming back, just not nice. Um, women don't like women. It's crazy business. It's crazy business. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it at. That. <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave it at that. Sorry, if you hear me, I'm still phlegmy from a cold. But yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I'd love to hear your opinions but i don't think that just because um the message that promise is giving out to women i find concerning to married women i find concerning largely largely so uh, but that's just my opinion oops but that's just my opinion but i find it largely concerning and that's where i'm gonna leave it <laughs> I think their, their mess is just a little bit ridiculous, man. I think there's, it's so unnecessary. Um, but hey, let's see how it unfolds. Okay, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this part two of my take, my controversial trending topics and my thoughts on everything that's currently been going down that you've asked me to speak about. I'm going to go. I have another video to film after this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much, as always, for choosing me over and over again. Until the next video, I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, sayonara.